The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Today, present presentation for markets.com, uh, focusing on SA40 index, top 40 index, call it what you will, ultimately the same point. Going to dig into what is it, uh, what's in it, what drives it, and then my lazy system towards the end, we'll touch on the lazy system, which works for any indices, including the SA40 index at, at the same time. If you've got questions, drop them in the Q&A box. We've certainly got some time for questions, but I'm going to take the questions at the end. Uh, I might get some drink, but mostly I would look for them at the end. If there's a time-sensitive question, then I'll take it as we're going along, and I'll grab it at that particular point in time. Um, so what what is the SA40? It is the 40 largest shares on the JSE. It's market cap and free float weighted, but it is literally the largest companies on the JSE. It trades on Safex hours at 8.30 to 5.30, and it is hugely liquid. One of the beauties of trading indices is that liquidity. You get massive liquidity, and you can absolutely, you know, and, and liquidity is not necessarily because you're a whale and want to trade in vast quantities. Quantities That liquidity just means that things move proficiently. It means that we can get in and out nice and easy. It means with our smaller position sizes, we're not moving markets as we're entering or exiting a particular position. So what are the constituents of the SA40? Uh, your big one right at the top is Richmond. Uh, coming in at 15%. Uh, Anglo-American, 11 and a bit. Uh, NASPAS, and then Process down there, three and a half. Essentially the, the same thing. So what, 11 and three quarters for essentially 10 cent. First round MTN, uh, their process. Standard Bank, uh, British American Tobacco. British American Tobacco is uh, huge in, in, in the world, but uh, small in, in, in uh, uh, the, the SA40, quite simply because they do shareholder weighted as well, which is, well, how many of those British American Tobacco PLC shares are held on the South African register? The short answer is not many. Most are held in the UK or the US or somewhere else. It's the same with Glencore. And if you don't get a certain, sorry, not Glencore, a, 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 B, and B. If you don't get through a, th a certain threshold, You've got to have at least 5% uh, held on, a, on the local register. And then only those that are held are considered for the purpose of the index. Otherwise, we would be this giant basically tracking British American Tobacco Index, yet very few of those shares would actually be trading on the JC. And then Sasso uh, and ABSA. An important component, so this is for the end of the last quarter, is that this list changes. So it's changing every day and every minute, right? This is as close on 30 September. But of course, since then, stocks have moved. Uh, NASPAS has gone higher, so its weighting would have increased. Um, MTN has gone lower, so it's decreased. And then quarterly, it's essentially reset, where the JSC sort of kicks out any losers, brings in the new winners, and gives you a new list of those 40 particular shares. But if we look at it, those 10 are 58.5%. So you're wondering, well, what about the other 30? Truthfully, the other 30 are tiny. And some of them are literally fractions of a percent. The top 10 is 58.5% almost. And that is, a lot of folks look at that and think, yo, that's terrible. That's kind of average for, for indices the world over, where you've got this concentration at the top of the index. Unless it's an equal weight index, where every stock will be, if it was the SA40, every stock would be 2.5%. Or you get some like the Swix, where they 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 they, have, they do some weird stuff and they manage to downweight certain shares and the like. But otherwise, this is what you look at, and this will be changing minute by minute. And then every quarter, they they do a fundamental change, and I'll come to that in a bit and tell you how to keep up to date with that. But this shows you how that index is looking, and really we can focus on on just that top ten. But if we drill in a bit more, ten cent is eleven, call it almost twelve percent. Just NASPASS and PROCESS. Now, I know PROCESS has got some other assets uh, uh, in, 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 in Europe, and I know that NASPASS has some other assets in South Africa, most notably Media24. But you know, the, the NASPASS and PROCESS traded a discount to their holding in Tencent, so no one's regarding the other assets at all. So certainly what Tencent does overnight in Hong Kong has an influence, but it's you know, a little over 10% of the index, it's not that massive an influence. It has at points been as high as 25%. So remember, 
uh, uh, Bob van Dijk did all that reorg uh, with the whole process and everything else. And sensors, that's kind of worked in that it's downweighted the, the weighting. And part of that's because the share price has been under pressure. Make no bones about that. So, you know, if, if, if in the morning when I do my Money Web Now show 6.30, I look at the 10 cent price. And that gives us, you know, if, if 10 cents not doing much, yeah. But uh, was it last week when there were reports that someone was wanting to buy out the entire stake in Tencent? Uh, the stock was up 10%. Well, that sent Naspas and Process up 10%. And well, that had a positive impact on the index. But if we look at, at, at offshores, uh, the, the, the foreign currencies, Richmond, uh, Anglo American, Naspas and Process, who, who report in euros, British American Tobacco, Sterling, Sassel, uh, they report in Zar, but of course, they're an oil company, well, oil and chemical, and oil and chemicals are priced in dollars. So, in fact, the currency is having a much bigger impact. Around almost 44% is going to be driven by currency. But it's weird because it's not as it has been in days gone by where this index was fundamentally dominated by resource stocks. And in fact, way back, it was pretty much gold stock. So if gold was running, well, the index would be running at, at the same time. If, if we look at this, we've got luxury. We've got Anglo-American, which is uh, uh, diamonds, copper, iron ore, and platinum. We've got uh, Naspas and Process, which is you know Chinese kids playing uh, 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 cell phone games, British American tobacco, which is tobacco, and Sassel, which is largely oil price. All foreign currencies and different currencies. Some euro, some sterling, uh, and then a whole bunch sort of dollars. But it does mean that the rand is perhaps the the bigger story here more than anything else, is, is following that currency and understanding what's happening with the currency. And that gets interesting because so in, in, in the, what we've been seeing so far in 2022 is an incredibly strong U.S. dollar. Why? Well, rising uh, uh, interest rates in, in the U.S. and developed markets and, and emerging markets the world over. And what those rising interest rates have done is they've pushed the 10-year in the U.S., the 10-year Treasury yield, to around 4%. So money's been flowing into the U.S. for two reasons. One, people are just scared. But two, well, now you can put your money in the U.S., you can buy a 10-year Treasury bill and get 4% return. Problem is inflation is currently 8.2, but if you're buying at, at a primary market and you're holding for the 10 years and you're locking in yourself some 4%, what's inflation going to be over that period in the US? Probably below 4%. So you'll get a real return. Inflation, let's say, averages 2.5%. You've got a real return of 1.5% with your 4% treasury yield. Nice, but not thrilling. But when the world is scared, which it is right now, and what are we scared of? Energy crisis in Europe, although that has largely dissipated. Most of Europe has got sufficient reserves of, of gas for winter, and it's looking like the European winter is going to be mild. So energy crisis is parked for now. UK, ugh, the UK is just a mess. Let's ignore them for now. Um, but there's stuff to be scared of out there. There's fears around recession. I mean, back to the UK. Uh, Bank of England last week said that they expect the UK to have its worst recession in 100 years. It will start next year and it will carry on into 2024. And we haven't even seen the new budget. Uh, remember, we got that one budget from Kwasi Kuteng, 23 September. That budget's been thrown out. We were supposed to get a budget last week, but of course we had a new leader, a new PM. So... Now we wait for the, the revised budget, which will give us a sense. And uh, lots of talk. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a hard budget. It's going to be an austerity budget. So there's war in Ukraine. Heck, let's not forget about that. There, there's China and there's zero, zero COVID policy. A lot of thought was that uh, post the Communist Party conference, uh, Xi Jinping getting uh, voted in for an unprecedented third term, uh, well, unprecedented since Mao back in the day, um, the thought was he might relax that zero COVID policy. He is not. It's currently ongoing. In fact, it was getting uh, increased on uh, Monday, Tuesday um, in some of the places where Foxconn operates because of outbreak. The point is he can't. He can't relax the zero COVID. And here's why. Because remember, China went into very hard lockdowns in February of 2020, which prevented people from catching it. They've got a vaccine, Sinovac, but their vaccine's not very efficient compared to the Modernas and the Pfizer's and the Johnson and Johnson's of the world. Um, and, and there's only about a 50% vaccine take-up rate in China. So if he lifts zero COVID, COVID's going to run rampant through the country. 
Now, depending on the variant, if it's Omicron, it will be less, the mortality will be less bad. But hospital, I mean, basically, uh, uh, the, the China will then go through what our second or third wave look like. The hospitals won't be able to cope. The populace won't be happy. So he's between a rock and a hard place. I don't think that that's going away anytime soon. So there is lots of fear and people are rushing into US dollars. And hence, we've seen massive dollar strength peaking at, at levels, the, the, the index, the DXY last seen 20 years ago. But that is starting to shift. If you look at that index, uh, and I can call it up here, let me not hit that button. Uh, where do I need to go to find that index? I need to go there. Uh, DXY. Lower highs and lower lows. Are we slightly rolling over in the US dollar? Now, why would we be slightly rolling over in the US dollar? Because we're getting comfortable with the fears, because the war in Ukraine is a horror, but we're kind of getting used to the idea, because the energy crisis in Europe is perhaps not as bad as we thought, and because US markets remain expensive, and there's a lot of value in emerging markets. So suddenly folks are saying, well, hang on a second, what about some good old fashioned emerging markets? So the, what I'm trying to say there is we've seen massive dollar strength, but I think we're probably going to be seeing weakness in 2023. Um, so yes, it is very much a, a, a currency story, but actually it's about sentiment and earnings because here is uh, the, the SA40 going back a decade versus the RAND. And you can see periods of uh, 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 yeah, there where the, the RAND markedly weakened out. Why? Well, that was Nene. That's Nene Gate, uh, December 2015. And the problem with that is that, yes, the RAND weakened, but no one wanted to buy SA stocks. Come on, that would have been absolutely crazy. So no one was buying the SA. So massive break in that correlation there. Then kind of stays correlated. But in 2018, Roma Pozo was elected president. At one point, the RAND went down to what I think it was 1140. And the market was sanguine and, and moving weaker. Um, huge disconnect during the, the, the COVID collapse. Again, you know, money was rushing into the US and out of everything else. So the market collapsed. The RAND went massively stronger. Then they converge. But what we're seeing again, uh, beginning of the year was a divergence, and now we're seeing that 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 divergence happening again. Where we're seeing a weaker czar and a, and a stronger top 40. If anything, there's almost an inverse relationship, which is weird in the sense because of all those companies, as I pointed out, 42% making their money offshore. But think about it for a moment. When does Iran really re weaken? Either when there's internal crisis, we just fired our finance minister uh, and put in a weekend special, or when there's global crisis and everyone wants to rush into the dollar. So on a broad trend, yes, but when there's panic in the currency, oftentimes our market is responding on the inverse because of it. So what it then really becomes about is the charts. Yes, interest rates and currencies will filter through into the companies that make up this index. And yes, they will therefore influence the price of the index. But ultimately, it's going to be about the charts and how the charts are, are, are performing. And that's what matters. When you're trading an index, and it's why I love trading indices, they are low volatility um, and, and no very little single event risk. Now, you fire the finance minister, single event, massive risk. Uh, first pandemic in 100 years, single event, massive risk. But as opposed to Marin Roberts uh, making a terrible announcement or, you know, uh, uh, NASPAS, maybe Tencent has been, has been uh, bought out and, and, and delisted. Stocks can move, you know, 5, 10, 20, what, at one point, Marin Roberts was up 30% yesterday. They can have huge single day moves. Indices seldom do that. Now I say seldom. I don't want to say never. But you know the biggest move in the in the SA40, to my memory, we're going back to October 1987, and it fell 22%. But even during this crisis here, and if we had more time going back, and we were looking at the 2008 crisis, you know, a bad week was 15 or 20% to the downside. Not a, a a single day. Stocks are way more volatile, and it's why I don't I don't trade equity. I trade indices, and that's why lack of volatility. Commodities also low volatile. FX is your, and when I say FX, I mean your majors. So uh, dollar, yen, sterling, and euro. I don't consider the Swiss franc a major because they pegged it for an age and then they removed the peg. So uh, dollar, yen, sterling, uh, and euro are your four majors. And the crosses between those 
are very, very unvolatile for want of a phrase. And those are wonderful to trade. The problem with those is that folks put far too much gearing on and then you get killed by the gearing. So this really is about the charts. And that is what, when you're trading an index, you've got that lower volatility, you've got nice trends that can play out and huge potential for profits to be made. So those constituents of the SA40 changes every quarter, March, June, September, and December, they change day to day because they locked in at the beginning of the quarter. And then as prices move, their weighting is shifting a little bit. But then at the end of every, uh, the March, June, September, and December, uh, the, the JSC committees uh, then sit down and say, cool, we're going to change what makes up this top 40 index. There isn't always a change. If there is, it's one, two, maybe three stocks exiting and three coming in. If you want to get put in the mailing list, you can email indices at jsc.coza. Uh, ask to be added to the uh, uh, index update mailing list, and they will send you those as and when they happen across all the indices, not just SA40. So you get it's a Word document, it's a dozen or so pages, uh, and it tells you exactly what's happening and the like. Also on the Sense News, uh, they'll tell you there as well. Um, but typically, I get the emails nice and simple in my inbox, and we can see what's going to be happening and what those changes are. But then lazy trading. I've been lazy trading system. This was something a bunch of us were trading in the early 2000s uh, on chat forums such as Page 88 and others um, and, and, and developed. And it simply <clears throat> got two moving averages. I've always, when I'm looking at charts, I'm very worried about trend lines and support and resistance and the like because there's too much of my bias in that. I don't like oscillators and indicators because price is your only truth. What is true in the market? The price. Something traded at a price, that is true because someone bought it, sold it at that price, and that is true. They have different reasons for doing it. Maybe one of them is right, maybe neither of them, maybe both of them, but it is true. As soon as we go with an indicator or an oscillator, what we're essentially doing is we're taking the one truth, price, and we're moving away from it. So all I use is moving averages, nice and simple and quite close to the price. I use exponential moving average because that weights yesterday more than the day before, more than the day before, and so on and so on, because markets have memory. If I'm using a 21-day exponential moving average, 21 days is four weeks and a day ago, what were we doing four weeks and a day ago? Uh, it was October. I don't know. I can't remember. What was I doing yesterday? Well, I, know what I, I even know what I had for breakfast yesterday. So it's that. So I'm always using exponential, and I'm always using moving averages. <clears throat> So indices are best to trade because of that low volatility. You can trade them across any 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 time frame. I even trade a, a, a pre-open, so before the equity market opens at, at uh, uh, nine, because of course the index starts 8:30. I trade it pre pre that open, um, and I'm just looking at at price action. In other words, I'm looking at the buyers and the sellers, and I'm looking at who looks to be most confident, and then I jump on that side. If the buyers look to be most confident, I go long. If the sellers look to be most confident, I go short. How do you see who's most confident? Well, you're looking at who's crossing the spread, how the bounces are happening. But even just that, I'm not using anything. I'm not even looking at the chart. I'm just looking at those bids and offers. But you can do this in any time frame, from tick to a minute to daily to weekly. I've, I've traded this index on weekly. I currently trade it on, on daily time frames. Key point, always have stocks. Always have a plan to exit. You are trading a geared product. When you get into the trade, <clears throat> excuse me, know how you're going to get out. And when that is hit, exit in a hurry. Always exit in a hurry when your stops are hit. So I use the 7 and 21 exponential moving average. Across up from the 7 to above the 21, I'm not looking at price. I'm only looking at the EMAs. Cross up from the 7 through the 21 triggers me a buy. And then if the next one is green, I enter. So you can see the inverse is true as well. Uh, we had a gap down, we had a, a cross down there. There was your short. In this case, I got closed out there. There's a couple of ways we can close. I'll, uh, I'll exit. I'll touch on that in, in a moment. Um, I don't exit a target. And I'll, I'll show you why in a bit. I'm not exiting a target. I'm exiting on stop. Exiting on target would make me uh, some more money in some cases. But then when things really, really run, I would lose out. Uh, and then there's an entry here in uh, late October, we had went through and we got the EMAs crossed and then I want a bar to close above. So if the cross happens and the level is 62,000, next time that a candle, whatever time frame you're in, next candle closes above 62,000, I'm buying. 
Why do I wait for that? It's confirmation. It's a two-stop entry process. And what it means is, is that some trades I then don't get into because I get the cross, but I don't get the confirmation. But every trade I don't get into would have been a losing trade. So it actually benefits me to therefore stay out. My exit is either the price closing below the 21 EMA or the EMA is inverse and essentially they cross. Now, the EMA is inversing is way better. For example, this trade here, you would have gone nicely short and then you would have got out of your short at about that point and you would have made money. Instead, I went nicely short and I got stopped because I use a close above or below depending on your position. So that my preferred is to use the 20 is to use a close below or above depending long or short the problem is it can whipsaw you sometimes but if you want the cross you're going to wait a heck lot longer and let's go and have a look at uh yep i want arc so let's start with some us indices because they've just recently crossed um so some nice trades happening here i mean particularly on, on, on the upside. Uh, I caught both the runs if we zoom out to one year. Um, it caught me the, 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 the April run into, into April. It caught me that run there, nice and simple. That one didn't confirm, and there's been lots of short activity happening at the same time. Let me zoom in, and let's look at detail there. So there was the candle where the cross happened. That candle there was where the cross happened. The seven went up through the 21. So I want to close above that candle. Next day, nothing. Next day, nothing. Third day, boom, got the close. I go long. And now I'm out because I got stopped because I used the 21 as my exit. If I was waiting for the cross, I would still be in that trade. No worries. The NASDAQ, however, slightly different story. So what we got, uh, what am I looking at here? Yeah, yeah. So the NASDAQ also went through, was looking good, and then failed, and actually would have you at this point in time short the index. So the NASDAQ gave you the buy, but it never confirmed. And that's the beauty. It never confirmed, so you never had to jump in. So there was no worries in, in that regard. The the waiting for the cross, and let's go look at uh SA40. Someone's asking, this is TradingView I use. I use TradingView because everyone can get access to it. I have a free account here. I'm not paying for anything. There's nothing special about it. It's just nice and simple. Um, so there was your, there was your uh, 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 cross up, failed, cross down, failed, cross up, uh, entry, and then stop. Very, very uh, 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 choppy. If you were waiting for the cross to exit you out, you would still be long this index. I thought we were going to get a nice center rally coming in. It looked like it from the NASDAQ and the S&P, but as, you know, it, 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 it failed. Uh, yeah, sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. As I say, you can use uh, the, the, the daily, weekly. I was looking at that point. I'm looking at daily chart. But if I drill down, what time frame am I going to get here? Uh, five minute. You can trade it in the five minute. You can hold overnight. I'm, more, I'm quite happy to be holding overnight. You can literally trade at any time frame that you want. It works across the time frames. You can also use levels. I mean, what we can see in the, in the SA40 here are, again, higher highs and higher lows, which is relatively bullish going through. Um, what I want to look for, however, so there's a, 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 a long entry. There's your trigger. There's your entry, so you're in at about, let's call it 61,800. If you were exiting on the uh, uh, break of the 21, you were exiting on that candle, you were exiting at about 63 and change, so you made 1,200 points. If you were exiting on the cross, however, you got out on, and I need to zoom in, you got out on that one, so you got out at 61,3, so you actually got a slightly losing trade. The point is, is that in the, so, it swings and roundabouts. Which one is better? I can tell you that exiting on the cross of the EMAs is better, but it takes a lot of stomach for that. This is a trend-based system. What is one of the core rules of trend-based systems? Lots of small losses, small winners, lots, tons. They pile up and then you get a big winner and then you're in business. But until you get that big winner, it's hard. But in this case, you would still be long in this example. Question coming, does it work in commodities? So 
does it work in crypto? Not a chance. Far too volatile. Just too volatile. Would it work on, on commodities? Sure. It absolutely works on commodities. Uh, there's oil. Uh, there's gold sitting there. Uh, and in fact, in gold, the cross was, yester uh, was yesterday. So if we get gold closing above uh, 17.12, we got a buy trigger on the gold. That's a fun one. The shortened gold here. So you would have shorted gold at that point there. Call it 17.35. Uh, your exit would have been there, which would have been 17.24. So you made $10. Or on the cross, which would have been there, which would have been 17.16. So you would have made $20. Um, you can try and take target. You absolutely can. But what you really want is nice big trends and let me show you where it can be an absolute thing of beauty let me go to a weekly chart i mean look at that move there of the lows and basically on a weekly chart you entered nasdaq at call it 9200 and if you were waiting for a close below you exited at 14.5, so you were 50% up about the gearing. And if you wanted to cross, you were basically getting out at about the same. Again, on the weekly, it's lovely. But here, you got into it, and then you got kicked out unless you were waiting for the cross, which gave you up there. So it depends how much stomach you have for drawdowns. That, more than anything, is what matters. If you can take, and let me get be clear about this, particularly on the longer time frames, on a weekly chart, you, you you can have 10, 12, 15 losing trades in a row. They're small. You do your 2% rule, everything's fine. But it, it it starts to add up and it starts to hurt. If you're trading, if you're exiting on, the, on a close below the 21, you get a few more winners. Your losses are a little bit smaller. It just makes it a less painful experience, I suppose, is the phrase. Uh, nope, that's not what I want to do. Uh, cancel. I want to go back to, nope, I want to go back to, oh, uh, come on, show me something. Oh, it's just shut everything down. I keep on hitting Command Q instead of Command Tab. Um, and that's just the, the, the zoom out of the, of, of the same chart. When markets move sideways, you are in for pain. There's just no two ways about it. The sideways moving market hurts because this is a trend-based system. I have tried to put in things that will say to you using something like an ADX or something like that uh, and saying, well, hang on, is there not perhaps a better way that we could you know, almost keep you out of a trade? And it keeps you out of some, but it just doesn't keep you out of enough. So, And then it keeps you out of some good ones too. So I just let it run. Uh, question coming, can you use ATR as a stop loss? Yeah, that's actually a great idea. So you use two ATR. That can be quite a nice stop loss, and that obviously trails up below you. If you go look at uh, justoneup.com, uh, search ATR, and you will find average true range. Search ATR, and you'll find some stop loss methodologies using that. It's a fairly intuitive way of doing it as well, and you can fairly nicely step that stop loss up behind it. And then when there's a reversal, uh, the stop loss doesn't reverse, of course, and it'll take you out, and you can jump. Um, so indices are the best thing to trade. Pick a time frame that works for you. You know, folks love the five minute, and that's stressful, and then you can't go and do anything. You can't even go make coffee or have a toilet break or something. Um, the Lazy 721 works great in indices, does not work on volatile instruments such as crypto, such as equities. Use it for indices. You can use it for commodities, but it really is designed with indices in mind. That absolutely is its purpose. Uh, contact details for myself, contact details for markets.com. That's where you're going to find the SA40. They've been trading it since about the middle of the year. So it is available there. They're on Twitter uh, with their own Twitter account these days, marketscom SA. Uh, if we've got any questions, any more of those, I will wait for that. Uh, please explain the wait for the next green candle confirmation again. Uh, I will do so, and it looks like I didn't lose that one. So... Let's go and look at a daily time frame and let's, so let me get rid of that. It's nice, but we don't need it. And let's use this short one up here. So that red candle there is where the seven 
crossed, which is the red uh, uh, EMA, crossed below the green. So 7 went down through 21. So that is now my trigger. That is 26 August. It's a Friday. And close of Friday uh, on the NASDAQ, I have a trigger. Do I do anything? No. I wait for the next candle that is red while I still have a valid trigger. What do I mean by that? As long as the 7 is still below the 21, the next candle that closes lower than that close, which happened to be immediately thereafter. Next, go to... Uh, there's a nice example on SA40. You can look at the same. Uh, where you get the cross. Now you've got to really, really zoom in here. So there you can see, you can only just, just, just see it. But the 7 went above the 21. That is 20 October. The 7 went above the 21 on that candle there. And that is my trigger to go long. But I don't get a candle that close above it. In fact, the next candle is red, and then the next candle, the seven actually goes down. So now I've got a short trade. So now I'm looking to go here. I'm looking to go long. Two days later, I'm now looking to go short. And this is the joys of trend-based trading. Uh, but I want to close below that level. So the candle that triggers it, I want to close if I'm going long above or if I'm going short a close that is then lower. Here, I've now got a trigger for a short trade. But it doesn't happen. What happens? Instead, it crosses up. I've now got a trigger for a long trade. That is where the 7 goes above the 21. Next time that it is green, closes above, boom, there's my entry. I would have been long of this index from 60,500, currently 62 and some change. Except, on my rules, I stopped out there, which was Thursday of last week. That was inflation week. Yeah, that was inflation. Uh, US inflation had come out on the Wednesday, uh, and everyone hated on it. We can see the same on the S&P. So there is my trigger candle, which is Tuesday, 25 October. My 7 has gone above my 21. That gives me a trigger. I'm waiting for a close above that, that close. It happens three days later. So I enter the trade on that candle that candle and that's what i mean by trigger confirm two-step entry process because if i just get in on trigger i often get into a trade and as you saw on that on that uh, uh, sa40 a moment ago i get in on the trade the next moment i'm being booted out instead of i'm waiting for trigger confirm and there's no confirm it saves me entering a trade because when i enter a trade i've got three costs right i got transaction fee i got spread to cross and then I've got my stop loss lurking. And when you enter a trade, your stop loss is always far away from where you are entering at. Uh, Donald, have I changed my EMA values over time? I have not, actually. <laughs> I have used these forever in a day. Um, th there have been periods when I haven't traded indices, sometimes because of jobs and compliance and stuff like that. I've used 721. I, I, other folks I know have, have tweaked and changed. Generally, they've kept it in that relationship, uh, i.e. The, 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 the 3x, so you could use... 5 and 15, which would be much shorter, much more responsive. You could use 15 and 45, which would be much slower and get you in. Uh, when we were looking at this way back in the day, and I, I must preface this by saying, when I say we, I, I was a hanger on in this process more than anything else. When it was being crunched by the folks back in the day, it, it was, yeah, they, they, they did look at a couple of others, but uh, the 7 and 21 was just the right amount of speed. Because what happens when something runs you're never going to call the top and the bottom. You're getting what Jesse Livermore calls the bit in the middle. And if you push the 7 and 21 to 15 and 45, you're going to get in higher, although you've got a higher level of certainty, and you're going to get out lower. So you're squeezing that bit in the middle. It will give you a higher level of certainty. In other words, probably a higher win rate, but it'll give you less per trade. And that's personal preference. If you moved it to 5 and 15, Heck, three and nine, I don't know, whatever. As you as you move those numbers down, what you would do is you would get in a lot quicker and you would make more in the middle, but you get a lot more failed trades and a lot more stopped trades and a lot more get in, get out, small loss, et cetera, et cetera. So it depends on on, on, on your stomach for, for, for the process. Um, and I, I'm trying to think, there was actually someone who was going to crunch it just before the pandemic started and actually 
I haven't spoken with them since. Not sure if they did or what they found, if they were better. Certainly 7 and 21 just works nice and simple for us. Yeah, I, I, I trade commodities, but not much. My, my primary trading, not even my primary trading, 98% of my trading is indices. Um, I trade SA40, I trade NASDAQ, I trade Eurostox 50, um, I trade uh, 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 Nikkei 225, I trade Europe, I trade S&P, um, the 500. I don't trade Dow, I think it's a V8 index, uh, Eurostox 50, chugging along very nicely. Uh, there was my cross candle. Yep, there was my cross candle. My next green day was there. So I've been long since 21 October at about 3,500 and change. I'm about 200 points in profit on that trade. And I know it's all like Europe, you know, crisis, everything else. When you're trading the chart, throw the news away. You will see the news. It will come to you in the price. But don't say Europe. No one wants to buy Europe. The Europe has got energy crisis and war, and well, I'm up 200 points in Europe, so I'm quite be happy to trade Europe. The UK 100 is looking quite fun. There we go. Um, so there was your cross. There's your entry. I mean, this is 28 October. I actually can't remember who was Prime Minister on the 28th of October. I think Trust was out by then. I think Trust was out then. Yes, she was out. In fact, we already had the new oak who was in. Okay, so... Anyway, so there I was in, call it 77,080. I'm up about 200 points here as well. Uh, Nikkei 225. Nikkei 225 can be a bit of a horror. Those gaps, man, it's like a cheese grater. Hey? So I, 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 I'm looking. I've been trading it. I'm not a big fan of trading it. I'm not in any position right now. There is a risk. You can see what happened here. We got the trigger, we got the good firm, I got stopped, and then it runs again. I'm looking for a nice Asia index. I don't like Australia, time zones. Um, the HSI, which is Hong Kong, um, I suppose we could be trading that. Too much like cheese grater as well. I, I like the European ones, but I'm trading the, you know, they all look the same. So I trade the, the Eurostox 50. Uh, you know, and here's uh, German 30, here's France 30, uh, 40. They all broadly look the same. So I just trade one of them. Um, what am I looking for here? There's the Oz 200. So here's Australia 200. Um, I've traded it in the past. I, I, don't even, I haven't traded it for years and years and years. Um, my problem then more than anything was, was, was the time differences. Although now that I do a very, very early show, that might work. So maybe I should rehab a look at it. What I've got is Americas, Europe, home and then i want something from 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 the east something i could trade uh in the east and i particularly you know i mean korea i mean maybe korea is worth looking at you know what it comes back to i remember once i met a guy who traded the singapore market and i remember saying to him but why singapore what do you know about singapore and he says exactly i know nothing about singapore what he liked i think singapore six hours ahead of us so he liked the you know he was one of those folks he so he would his his, his, his trading day would 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 would, would, would start at i don't know some crazy time three o'clock in the morning which for him was perfect and then end at sort of you know i don't know lunchtime south african time and then you could spend his afternoons and doing whatever but i mean it, it worked for him but the key point was he knew nothing about the company he was trading which means we've got no cognitive bias around what we think they should or shouldn't be doing, which is hugely important. Uh, my screen has disappeared. Now, why has my screen, uh, it seems to be back. Folks are saying you can only see my face. Paused, gone. Let me stop that. Let me show. It should be there. Hopefully, there we go. Hopefully, we are back again, and now we are back on to that. Uh, folks, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. I am going to park it there. Uh, if you've got any more questions or anything, you can contact myself. You can get hold of the team at markets.com. Uh, they can help you with product and everything. As I said, SA40 is relatively, well, about four or five months old on, on, on their platform, uh, but I certainly am a, a huge fan of Trade indices, they're nice, they're simple, they, they get into spectacular trends from time to time, and they're much more immune to single event risk. I know, you fire a finance minister or something like that, stuff can go wrong. But if you were short meta, they're now firing 11% uh, of their staff, uh, 13,000 people, and the stock's up 4% pre-market. 
uh, and being short of meta wasn't a bad trade right now, except you're just getting uh, uh, absolutely canned. So, yeah, indices. We'll park it there. Ladies and gents, everyone have a good day further. Uh, as always, look after yourself. If you can, look after someone else as well. Cheers, all.